Hi, I'm Paul McGowan. Thanks for joining me. Let's see what kind of challenge is upon me today. <laughs> oh boy. These have been some good questions. Thank you. Thank you so much for sending these. All right. Tiens, I think, T I E N S, in Auckland, New Zealand. Wow, far away. All right. Why doesn't anyone make active servo controlled motion feedback speakers anymore? I remember how amazing a set of Philips MFB bookshelf speakers around the end of the 70s, and that sound stayed with me all my life. Best to make active speakers, then you save heaps of space in the modern home. Well, Tiens, it's a great question. Uh, I'm, I think we're mixing up a few things here. Uh, so let's, let's cover a couple of them. First off, active speakers. There's no question in my mind that active speakers are the way to go. Uh, if, if I were to wave my magic wand in this industry, uh, I would produce speakers that uh, are active and wireless. The speaker designer can control the amplifier, the crossover, the drivers, everything to do with it and put in the perfect components that they know are going to work under all conditions. I don't think there's going to be a better sound that you're going to be able to get. Now, why aren't more people doing that? In fact, why are so few companies doing that? Well, there are two reasons. One, most active speakers that I'm familiar with uh, with few exceptions, are, are cheesy. They are convenient speakers. They were built because somebody didn't want to have to put all this other hazari to, to make it work. So they're, they're cheaper, lower cost speakers. I mean, even on my desk here, I've got some active speakers and they're okay and they, they play well. But they were never intended to be part of the main listening system. The other reason is us audiophiles in general don't want to buy active speakers. We want a passive speaker. Maybe the bass is amplified. That's becoming more and more accepted. But in general, we don't want active speakers because we want to be able to mix and match. We want to hook up our tube amp, uh, our this and our that, um, and create our own sound. I know I do. Now, motional feedback, servo systems. Those are typically done for bass. And at least the ones I'm familiar with, and I've worked with servo woofers in Infinity and Genesis loudspeakers for years. Um, the, the art of servo design was, was taught to me by my good friend Bascom King, who was one of the very first pioneers to uh, he and John Ulrich and Arnie Nudell and that crowd years and years ago and back in the 70s knew that woofers are problematic. There is no such thing as a perfect passive woofer. Uh, and, and the reason is, especially in, in, in large speakers, they have weight, mass. And as a loudspeaker pushes forward and pulls back in order to create the sound that uh, makes, makes music for us, they they can't respond as well as they could. There's not as much control over that speaker. Imagine the same, same thing happens if you're driving along in the car and you step on the brake, you keep moving because of uh, inertia. And so the, the more mass, the heavier the cone, like in a big 12 inch or 18 inch woofer, if you can imagine something like that, it's relatively heavy. So when the amplifier says move forward and now stop and come back, that keeps going for a little bit because the amplifier has no feedback, no, no way of knowing what that woofer is doing. So the woofer does kind of what it wants. The bottom line is that woofer is not going to respond to the demands of the amplifier uh, as well as it should. It's not perfect and it's going to have distortion uh, and overhang, etc. A way around that is to put some feedback, a motion detector, called an accelerometer. These can be mounted right to the woofer and it will say, oh, here is what the woofer is actually doing compared to what I'm telling the woofer to do. And that difference can then be calculated in real time and made up for by the wattage of the amplifier. And that's called a servo system. And it's something that 
most Infinity loudspeakers, all the Genesis loudspeakers that we designed have. And as PS Audio and uh, Arnie and Bascom uh, start designing our own line of loudspeakers, they'll all be servo-controlled woofers, uh, at least uh, the ones where we can afford to do that because it's a better way to go. So yes, I agree, emotional feedback, uh, certainly in woofers, is an excellent way to go. Great question. Thanks for asking.